hey, welcome back. This time what we're gonna look at is putting in a shed pad, building the shed pad, but we're gonna look at it on a budget. How can you build the shed pad on a budget? When I was pricing out sheds, they were gonna charge anywhere from $500 to $1,000 to prepare the site. And depending on your borough or township regulations, you might need to have a treated border. In this case, I needed to have a six by six border. I'm gonna show you in this video how I did it by hand and didn't use any kind of uh, equipment to excavate that area out and also get in the stone myself with my small uh, Dodge Dakota pickup and loading the stone in. So with a little bit of uh, time and a lot of labor, you can save yourself a lot of money. I was able to bring this one up to the level. I'm gonna check for square and see how we are for square. It's pretty darn square right there. Okay, the next step here is to pin these six by sixes down into the ground. And I'm gonna do that by drilling some holes, putting in some rebar. I cut some rebar. Uh, these are shorter pieces, about 16 inches. And that's just gonna pin this bottom layer down. And then when I come and do the top layers over here, where I build up the wall, I'm gonna put in longer pieces to go through both layers and then through the ground. I'm gonna clean it out there. All right, I have that six by six border done now. I have it pinned down the first row. I am gonna be putting retaining wall around the back part where the, the hill is a little bit higher, but I'm gonna wait and do that until the shed is on top of there, just so we make sure we don't knock the shed into it as it's being put on. So the final thing to do here is load this with stone. Now I'm gonna use 2B clean stone. Depending on the quarry, it might, may look different. You want it to pack down and, and once it's down, you don't want it to settle. So you don't want your shed to move at all. So when I was planning this out, my idea was to get a dump truck to get two and a half tons dumped in here and then all I have to do is spread it around with a rake or maybe a shovel. 
Unfortunately this morning, it wasn't supposed to rain, but it was raining this morning and they weren't really willing to deliver it. They were afraid to get stuck in the yard and I was actually worried about getting big ruts in the grass and, and ruining the, the yard anyway. So I had to do it the slow and steady way. I had to get loads put in the back of my pickup, one scoop at a time. And um, I'm gonna show you what that looks like. I'm gonna back into the, uh, the stone yard, back up underneath the hopper, and they're gonna load probably the, the final one here. But first, I'm gonna unload this, this load you see here behind me. So what I decided to do is take this 10 footer and run it this way and it has a, a few inches of bearing on each side because this isn't quite 10 feet across. And that way I'll run it all the way across the pad and this is straight and that will level everything out as I go slowly. It's been a few days since the shed was delivered. I was able to spend some time working on the retaining wall and making it critter proof on the bottom, so I'm gonna show you that. I'm real happy with how the shed turned out. He was able to get it right exactly where I wanted it, as you could see on the video. Very level, front and back, and it's sitting right where I wanted it. It looks really nice. One of the first things I needed for the shed was a ramp, and I ended up using some treated deck boards that I had, 
and out of an eight foot piece, I cut them into three equal pieces at 32 inches. And at a 10 degree incline here, angle, uh, it came out pretty nice and it's not too steep, it's not too long, it doesn't stick out too far. I basically have a ledger board that runs underneath here that's a treated uh, two by four and I cut that 10 degree angle on it and then I ran the boards and I have two pieces underneath here to hold it together and it's nice and solid because it's such a short distance. Next you can see I have this half inch grid metal cloth here and I use that to keep the critters out. I took, after this was in here, I dug this stone back out, I removed the stone and I made sure that I had this down, going down four or five inches, and then I turned it back this way and then filled stone back on it. I'm uh, keeping my best, do my best to make sure that the stones were as level as I could on both sides. And then I just used some um, larger staples and tied it into the uh, four by four skids that this sits on. And I did this on both sides. At first, what I was thinking of, because I saw it in one of my neighbor's sheds, was putting a, a piece of treated across here. But then after doing some research, I realized that you do need some airflow underneath that shed. That way you can make sure that any moisture that gets under there has a chance to dry out and you don't develop any mold situations. Over here you can see part of the retention wall and you can see that I've made a transition to the back where I have three layers of the six by six beams. And I cut it at a 45 degree angle here with the skill saw and that worked pretty well. And what I did is then drove 16 inch pieces of rebar down through and with that, I was able to get those all the way down to almost the bottom of the uh, very bottom six by six without getting my drill bit down into the stones. I was able to save the tip of the drill bit and then drive these um, half inch rebar all the way down. Now I used a half inch drill bit to drill these holes and then I used half inch rebar. So that made for a very tight fit. And that was the idea because I wanna make sure this is solid and it is absolutely solid as I drove, once I had them in place where I wanted, I drilled through all three of them and then drove that down real hard and it's not moving anywhere. Here's the view from the back. You can see I have the three layers of the six by sixes along the back here. I'm going to backfill this in then and transition this, this hill area into a flatter, flatter area here that we're going to do some plantings back here probably. And you can see, since this side was a little shorter, I didn't have to come quite as far out with the six by sixes as I transitioned down to the front. I just interlocked the corners of the retention wall here in a crisscross pattern, and I just did butt joints. But it's nice and solid, and it's not gonna go anywhere. One of the reasons I like doing this YouTube channel is sharing some of my ideas on how to save money. And this is a good case in point with this video. So thanks for sticking around to the end. I really appreciate you watching. And hopefully you picked up a couple things that can help you save a few dollars. If you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button. And also leave me some feedback in the comments section. I'd love to hear from you. So again, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Click on these videos here to check out some more of my work. And until next time, get out there and start building something.